Mad Men showcases a multitude of women who all have drastically different looks, ambitions, and personalities that are living in a world that pushes a strict version of how a woman should look and behave. Fashion and beauty can serve as a tangible reflection of an era, hence the creation of an idealized image that is considered to be coveted and aspirational. Betty, a former international model turned suburban housewife, and Megan, an office worker and aspiring actress, can be visually defined as the ideal woman of their respective era, as they reflect the ideals of those eras through their captivating looks that function differently in relation to how fashion is viewed over time within societal norms of expected image or behaviors. Yet they do break down boundaries because internally they do not match their external self. Despite holding an idealized image, while many are in awe of, romanticize, or are inspired by them due to their picture-perfect lives for the late 50s, 60s, and early 70s, both Megan and Betty ultimately find this conceptual idealization to be their downfall. In the 60s, social and political changes were beginning to occur at a rapid pace. In terms of fashion and beauty, the sexual revolution and feminist movement had a heavy impact on women's everyday lives, including their looks, especially with the high-powered and glamorous golden age of advertising. While the majority of women and mad men continuously evolve with the times, Betty fights this current and chooses the past within her lifestyle and fashion as the world around her moves forward. Megan is the embodiment of the new world, and she is not just a polarizing figure to Betty, but to everyone around her. She is the ideal type of woman of the late 1960s, a more modernized world in comparison to the 50s, which is no longer set on conformity, but is one that seeks freedom and exploration. Janie Bryant, the lead costume designer on Mad Men, purposefully made Betty and Megan be complete visual contrasts to convince their opposing views of the world due to how Megan is possibly the show's most modern woman as she's very cosmopolitan and non-traditional in every way possible. To capture the liberated spirit a vast majority of the new generation had during this time in the 60s. Megan is that character in which I can really show that, you know, time has passed. While Betty constantly put her efforts into an old-fashioned image that she was brought up to curate which promised a good life. For context, Betty was born in Cape May, New Jersey, where her family summered and was raised in a suburb of Philadelphia on the main line. Throughout her upbringing, her mother stressed the importance of beauty and how her looks were the most valuable asset she has to offer as a person. So appearance means everything to her because she developed a strong belief system that ingrained the concept that men are strong, women are pretty. So in order to have a good life, Betty believed that she needed to be beautiful. The world around her constantly confirms this. Oh my, I am such a fan. You know, when you imagine someone saying that to you, you always hope it's her. <laughs> and the belief becomes ingrained. She is never praised for her personality or intellect. Despite being a college graduate of this time and continuing her studies, she only receives compliments around her looks. After graduation, Betty only really had her own form of life outside of the home of her father and previous to marriage when she had a modeling career in Italy, then moving to Manhattan, where she would meet her first husband. I was a model when I met Don. A model in Manhattan? Yes. Soon after taking the role of a housewife. The show was about what women do for men. There is an a observation just about no matter what a woman wants, their job is to define a man in this world. Her looks then adapt to her husband's ideals, as she is someone who wants attention, admiration, and praise, not only from him, but everyone who sees them as a couple. And this one, my god, are you two sold separately? <laughs> when Betty is first introduced in Mad Men, it can be difficult to see past the outer life. But the more of Betty's inner life and thoughts that we see, it is quite evident that there is a great disconnect. Beneath her looks, Betty is enduring a lot of pain. As she was once very devoted, she is miserable and unable to handle the pressures and duties that comes with being a housewife and puts all her efforts into what she can control, her image. 
Despite this, she still strives to have a picture-perfect life. She hides her psychological pain and emotionally stunted, childish mindset beneath her fashion as she turns herself into an extension of her husband. When with Dawn, Betty wears dresses with prints such as florals, plaids, and stripes that is paired off with matching headbands, fur coats, and stilettos. She's the standard image of women in the 1950s and the early housewives of the 1960s, which was very dainty, polished, and traditionally feminine. With the increase of marriages and birth rates during this era, there was an extreme focus on gender roles, which led to this expected image cast onto women. You don't seem to be exactly the type to make this guy behave like a human being. Let's start all over again. Brother. Oh, brother is right. My mother was very concerned about looks. She wanted me to be beautiful so I could find a man. There's nothing wrong with that. Because of this, Betty's looks cannot alter in any sort of way, since she is very determined to fit into a specific mold and seeks validation about this, especially from men, because this affirms that she is achieving the image that she feels the need to have in order to be considered acceptable. Dr. Wayne tried to look down my neckline the other day. He sits behind me. And as far as I'm concerned, as long as men look at me that way, I'm earning my keep. Rather than having compliments primarily from men, the other women of the show are constantly in awe of Megan. It's a big deal. And when it happened to me, they acted like it happens all the time. It doesn't. I mean, if anything, I should be jealous. But I look at you and I feel like I don't know, I'm getting to experience my first time. I'm sorry to bother you, but we love your show. Oh, thank you. Oh my goodness, you're really good at everything. And we'll even take style cues from her. Most other characters are inspired by her and are given hope, much like the new era, but she also mirrors how true progress is actually not being made, despite all the promise and longing for it. By the mid-60s, the expected image evolved into one that opposed the previously coveted one. Women were no longer in the constraint of what was quote-unquote appropriate in terms of behavior or dress to some extent, so they could challenge those belief systems and those who enforced them, which allowed for a lot of self-expression and experimentation, many new ideals were born, and more boundaries were being pushed. The ideal woman, in the eyes of society, became drastically different, hence creating a multitude of different styles and fashion norms. You are every man's fantasy. You're like Ali McGraw and Bridget Bardot had a baby. You should be the most famous person in the world right now. For instance, the miniskirt protest outside the House of Dior in 1966. The piece was considered to be highly political and went on to symbolize women's liberation. Meghan ushered in a new era of madmen as she was the first to wear a mini dress that visually confirmed her place in society. The costume designer stated, I always saw Meghan as a character who is young and fresh on the pulse of what is happening in the youth culture. More than any other women on the show, her wardrobe really reflects that transition into the mod period of the 60s. Also, she is an actress, and she is from Montreal, so those are different elements of her character. The mod subculture is defined as fashion-obsessed and a hedonistic cult of hyper-cool. Young adults who lived in metropolitan London they grew increasingly affluent in the post-war Britain era. The youth of the 60s were the first who didn't have to contribute to the family's finances and could use disposable income to purchase higher-end clothing and created global impact as their fashion became highly widespread and coveted when it hit mainstream culture to give more than just a garment but a new way of life. Megan is always meant to give something more with her outfits. This is captured in her vintage black dress that is embellished with rhinestones around the neckline. The sleeves are altered to provide movement and flair through a pleated silk chiffon, adding in a younger, sexier element. Her shoes are very mod, a vintage pair that is square-toed with a one and a half inch square heel. She stands out 
against the other women in the scene, who are all brightly and femininely styled, while she is more sophisticated with a sultry look. Initially, she has a more Parisian influence to her fashion, but as her lifestyle changes, she breaks away from this to implement a variety of influences. Megan and other women of the show, such as Joan and Peggy, have styles that evolve as they are modern women now. At one point, Betty was considered to be a modern woman and takes it on more as a performance. Betty undergoes many hardships, including physical as well as psychological abuse, that breaks the entire facade. Betty grows increasingly more sullen and becomes detached from who she was. During her modeling years, Betty was vibrant, stylish, and independent. We only see the side of her when she goes on a trip to Rome, where she is more in touch with her true personality since the pressures of looks and behaviors that a mother and wife should have are removed from her. When she returns home, she is again disconnected from reality with behaviors that hinder her life and mental well-being. Betty is enlivened. When they go to dinner at the plaza, she enters this scene in slow motion, descending the staircase in a gown, fur coat, and is adorned with delicate jewelry to meet Dawn who rises to greet her a nod to classic movies of this time period. Here, she is everything that she wants to be. Megan has a very similar scene, where she goes to meet Dawn at the airport. She gets out of the car to go greet Dawn, in reference to the film The Graduate. She is wearing a revealing ruffled haltered baby blue mini dress, Scylla Presley-esque hair, and a high fashion mod makeup look. Here, she is the epitome of late 60s cool, going back into the car and taking the driver's seat, despite Dawn opening the door for her. Here, she is a woman taking charge through her actions and visually conveying this mindset that is depicted in her image. But we can see that she is actually very nervous and not as confident as she makes herself out to be. Megan and Dawn have a huge sartorial gap as he is part of an older generation, while Megan is now the fashion-forward wife who doesn't have a signature look. Rather than being an extension of Dawn's, I feel like myself when I'm with you. But the way I always wanted to feel. She visually depicts the values that he wants for himself. When she throws a party, she is wearing a geometric mini dress from Pucci, a fashion designer and politician whose eponymous label is synonymous with the geometric prints and a kaleidoscope of colors. Around this group of people, she is more in her element and visually aligns with them in a way that she cannot with Dawn. The same episode, Betty throws a party that has a strong visual contrast to Megan's. The two characters are very contrasting from smoky, sexy, to very pretty and perfect. Thank you. It is graphic, but it's floral. Uh, in contrast to Megan's dress, which is very geometric, it's everything modern. Dawn's aesthetic, like Betty's, does not alter outside of certain boundaries, but Megan is a style chameleon. She is the only character to not have a set costume template because Megan is constantly evolving and adapting herself. Her fashion inspirations are more conceptual and trend aware. For instance, her New York looks are more put together and polished, which can be found in her monochromatic looks and tailored coats. She encapsulates East Coast ideals rather than forcing herself into a single look, unlike Betty, who is often compared to and will emulate the looks of Grace Kelly. Anybody ever tell you you're a dead ringer for Grace Kelly? An American film actress who would often opt for the iconic dress silhouette of the 40s to 50s, known as the new look made famous by designer Christian Dior. As a former model, it would make sense that Betty would go for a look that is a combination of classic and stunning high fashion and fused with old fashion ideals. When newly remarried to Henry Francis, Betty's housewife look alters into one of a politician's wife. She then turns to Jackie Kennedy for inspiration. It is Miss Porter's. Jackie Kennedy went there. 
She dressed as more conservative, with two-piece ensembles, smart coats, and more pantsuits. The color scheme is less vibrant and more understated. She no longer accessorizes excessively and carefully curates her look to be stylish, proper, and now functional. Betty mainly wear colors, such as pale yellows, pinks, and blues, as an ode to her femininity, political respects, and patrician upbringing. She wears these colors to look unattainable and above others, combating the vibrant and earthier tones that grew to be more popular. The feminine silhouette and style icons are symbolic of the visual identity Betty longs for. While she physically does not look exactly like Grace Kelly, or Jackie Kennedy, she can create the overall essence of them and execute it in order to create her own life narrative. Whenever she is farther from this ideal, she has very high distress. She cannot mentally handle not fitting into this image that she deems as worthy, but the idealization that she is striving for is no longer relevant and is losing its place in society. When Betty faces Megan, she is ashamed of herself, but she is also in fear as she is facing the future since she is a woman who chooses to uphold lost ideals. Even the other women who she felt so aligned with are beginning to move forward. Betty cannot bring herself to, and her looks continue to be an outer manifestation of the life that she wishes were real. Even when diagnosed with cancer, her vanity is part of the reason as to why she declines treatment. She cannot handle any sort of change. Megan, however, thrives in change. After landing a commercial, Megan begins to transition from the East to West Coast ideals, a visual depiction of herself separating from her older colleagues and embracing a new path as an artist, but she unfortunately does not have the work ethic, discipline, or genuine passion to achieve her goals. You don't ever care what I want to do. Yet, she can definitely look the part. Megan is ahead of contemporary style. After moving to Los Angeles, Megan's look becomes more avant-garde that sheds away her formerly proper look into one that embodies the freedom and lifestyle that she wants over her old life in the show. She does not ever live to her true potential, but constantly projects the look that she believes aligns with it, as she grew to be very insecure, vapid, and uses her image as a form of security as she deflects any struggle that she can. While Megan gives an effortless essence, Megan's efforts, when needed, fall short. Peggy, she's going to be a failing actress with a rich husband. No, I think she's good at everything. I think she's just one of those girls. Then you had every right to be hard on her. Did you know that he met Betty Draper doing a print ad? Did you know she was a model? While Betty's determination and headstrong behaviors hinder her, Betty went from being the ideal woman to the one left behind as she defies what the culture now expects from her. She maintains her rigid idea of perfection and leaves the world on her own terms, while Megan, in the present, embodies literally everything, which ultimately makes her fall short. All of the freedom and hope that she lives for is also ultimately a concept that she has defined herself with rather than taking actions to create it. Hence, there is no substance behind her. Even though Megan is ahead in regards to her style, she is falling behind because she is not making the essential progress internally needed to be truly happy or accomplish any goals. In the end, both Megan and Betty have been living their lives on the terms set by others, hence turning into ideal nostalgic images rather than having their image be a reflection of themselves. It's the other way around, due to the pressure both felt to conform to society and media standards of how a woman should be, or the promise of a good life that being a certain way would provide. Other women in Mad Men do progress forward and develop while still taking part in the same ideals and experiencing the same pressure, showing that there are other options while still enjoying beauty, fashion, and self-expression in a manner that isn't damaging. They are leading life on their own terms, 
as they embrace all parts of oneself rather than what is expected, pushed, or deemed worthy by others. Though Betty and Megan are products of their era and have drastic approaches, the freedoms and experimentation of Megan in combination with the determination and discipline of Betty applied to all parts of life rather than pure image would create a more versatile and substantial future rather than becoming a living ideal that will become dated or unable to exist. People have a chance to make their personal image, one that is truly their own and authentic, in order to align the inner and outer self which can aid in producing a more authentic and fulfilling way of being. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe, like, turn on notifications, and comment. Thank you so much for watching.